Hello, my students, and hello, everyone. This is Miss Maria Angelica Balatukan, and welcome to our Intermediate Accounting Online Lesson. Welcome to the first lesson in Intermediate Accounting, which will focus on the accounting for cash and cash equivalents. In this lesson, you will learn the items to be included in cash and cash equivalents and you'll compute the correct cash and cash equivalent balances. For the specific learning outcomes, you'll be able to identify the items that will be part of cash and also those that will be considered as cash equivalents. And after, we will be able to compute the correct balance for cash and cash equivalents and also prepare the journal entries to account for the petty cash fund. So let's start. First, we'll go to the definition of cash. So cash simply means money. So money is a standard of medium of exchange in business transactions. In accounting, cash is not only uh, bills and coins, but also other negotiable instrument that is payable in money and acceptable by the bank for deposit and immediate credit. Important um, point to be remembered that to be included as part of cash, that should be unrestricted in use, which means we can freely use the money or it is not restricted for a particular project or for a particular purpose. So what are these cash or money that can qualify as cash? So first we have the cash on hand. So cash on hand includes undeposited cash collections, meaning these are collections for the day and wala pa siya or hindi pa siya na de deposit sa banko. Another is undeposited dated customer checks. So these are checks that were paid by our customer. We received it from our customer and hindi pa rin na de deposit sa banko. We also have this traveler's check, which is a certified bank draft that travelers may use the same way as they use regular paper currency. Then we also have the cashier's check, which is also a type of official check that banks issue and sign. When you purchase a cashier's check, the bank takes the money from your checking or savings account and puts it in its own account. So the bank then writes out a check to the person or business you need to pay. So you'll typically pay a fee for a cashier's check to the bank. So from your account, they will transfer that to the account of the bank. And it will be the bank who will um, write the check to the, your pay or to the company or a client to which you're, you're going to pay. Then we also have the manager's check. So this is a check issued by the bank's manager upon the bank itself promising to pay to the payee or its order an amount certain in money at a certain date. We also have money orders, which is a certificate issued by a government or a banking institution that allows the stated payee to receive a cash on demand. A money order functions much like a check in that the person who purchased the money order may stop payment. Also, we have the bank drafts. So this is a written order addressed to the bank to pay an amount of money to the order of the maker. Uh, the maker is the one who uh, made or write on the uh, order in this written order. If it's the check, if, if it's a check, then the one who prepared the check. So that is the maker. 
So it is a check that is drawn on a bank's funds and guaranteed by the bank that issues it. To get a banker's draft, a bank customer must have funds or cash available. The bank will freeze the amount needed or move those funds into the bank's account to complete the payment. Another part of cash is the cash in bank. So if kanina it's not yet deposited in the bank, this one is already in the bank. So that's why it's cash in bank. So it could be a demand deposit or it could be a savings deposit. So demand deposit can also be called as a commercial deposit, a current account or a checking account. Then the third one are cash funds, which are used for current operations. When we say current in accounting, it should be utilized if it's that's an asset. It should be utilized within a year or within 12 months. If we we're talking about liabilities that are current, so this should be paid or these are liable within 12 months. So therefore, these types of funds here can be used or may be used within 12 months so they are for current use so we have petty cash fund for small and miscellaneous disbursements so para sa yung mga maliliit lang na bab uh, babayaran like for example yung pamasahe uh, snacks or uh, gasoline na hindi masyadong uh, malaki yung babayaran. So, that's for um, pay, uh, payments that are in small amounts. Then, we also have change fund. That's for change or pang sukli. We have payroll fund, which is for uh, payment of salaries and wages. Then, we have the purchasing fund for the purchasing of inventories, we also have the revolving fund used for limited or specific purpose by the management currently for current use, interest fund for payment of interest, dividend fund for payment of dividends. Then we also have travel fund for travel or transportation purposes. And we also have tax fund for payment of taxes. Then we also have these other funds, but they have a different classification. They are not immediately classified as cash, but there are instances na pwede silang maging part of cash or pwedeng maging uh, part ng cash equivalent. Pero um, in general, unless it is uh, described in the problem otherwise, so this would be the uh, parang generic talaga na classification nila. So, for pension fund, it is treated as um, non-current. But if the related liability, uh, the purpose for which the pension fund is made, so kung babayaran na siya within a year, it becomes current, then the pension fund will be classified as current rin. And this will be part of cash. Preferred Redemption Fund, it is classified as a non-current investment unless the preferred share capital has a mandatory redemption and the redemption is already within one year from the reporting period, in which case this fund will be part of the cash equivalent. So, this is cash equivalent. So, ang, ano niya, um generic or default classification is non-current investment but if this happens this condition happens it becomes a cash equivalent if you acquire property plant and equipment it will be always non-current even if you're planning to pay or buy the property next year okay then we have contingent fund so, this is for emergency purposes na fund. It's a non-current investment. The same with the insurance fund. For the sinking fund, which is uh, established na siya 
uh, for payment or for for future payment of a liability for example may utang kang bonds and you're going to pay that uh, years after so therefore you will um establish a sinking fund para unti-unti uh, mag the deposit ka dun sa, sa fund at uh, tutubo siya ng interest para later on after the the several years is makukumpleto na yung amount na kailangan mo to pay for the bonds. It is always non-current even if it is expected to be disbursed next year. So remember, the classification of a cash fund as current or non-current should parallel the classification applied to the related liability. Meaning, you're going to classify a non-current asset if you will classify it as a non-current asset if the related liability becomes current. That's what, what is meant by parallel. So, kung yung utang na babayaran, babayaran na siya next year, therefore, yung uh, asset would be current as well. Then we have cash equivalents. So what are these cash equivalents? These are short-term and highly liquid investments that are readily convertible into cash and so near their maturity that they present insignificant risk of changes in value because of changes in interest rates. And these are only high liquid investments that are acquired three months before maturity can qualify as cash equivalent. So what do we mean by yung nag, na purchase ng siya three months before maturity? So dapat yung titingnan mo is yung purchase date. Okay? And you compare that with the maturity date. So dapat pag binili mo yung um, investment, dapat three months prior to maturity or three months or less prior to maturity. Pag nag-exceed na siya ng three months, okay, so pag less than or exactly three months, so cash equivalents siya. So you're going to classify that as a cash equivalence. Pero what if, ma'am, lumampas ng three months, so, magbigay ako ng example. So, example is, what if the maturity date of the investment is um, February 1 of the following year? So, kailan ako uh, bibili or kailan ako bumili ng investment? So, for example, I bought the investment on December 1. The maturity date is February 1. So, if you're going to count how many months before maturity uh, ko siya nabili. So, that would be kung December 1. So, December, entire December, and, and, the, and then entire January. That's two months before maturity. So, how do I classify that? I will classify that as a cash equivalent. Okay, na-meet na niya yung uh, necessary term. What if I bought it on November 1? So, if you're going to count the entire November, entire December, entire January, then that would be 3 months. So, pasok pa rin sa cash equivalence. But if I bought it on October 1, that would be 4 months. Diba? Or I bought it on October 15, so that is 3 and a half months. So, therefore, it exceeds three months. So, is it a cash equivalent? No. It would be a short-term financial asset or a temporary investment. And that will fall under current assets pa rin. Bakit current assets, ma'am? Because remember, within 12 months yung current assets, uh, it doesn't matter if it's three months or more as long as it's within one year. So, yung cash equivalents, cash and cash equivalents, Pareho rin ng classification is still under current assets. Ang pagkakaiba lang, if more than 3 months but within 1 year or not more than 1 year, uh, short-term financial assets siya. Hindi siya kasali ng cash or at hindi rin siya kasali sa cash equivalents. If it's greater than 1 year yung term, 
yung, yung investment. And that, that will be a long-term investment. So, pag nag-exceed na, na siya ng one year, so hindi na siya current. That's why it's under non-current assets. So, what are examples of cash equivalent? So, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, these are just some of the examples. So, it's not entirely um, confined lang dito sa lima. So, we have a time deposit. Okay. Uh, purchased three months before maturity date. So, yung example ko kanina. So, dapat i-count mo from the date purchase until the maturity date. So, pag four months siya, five months, six months, then it's a short-term financial asset, not a cash equivalent. But pag three months and less, then that's a cash equivalent. Three month treasury bill, three year treasury bills, but purchase three months before the date of maturity. So it doesn't matter kung gano ba siya katagal, basa yung iko compute mo lang or yung account mo lang is from the time na nabili hanggang sa maturity. Okay? Then, three-month money market instrument and commercial paper, redeemable preference shares with redemption period and acquired three months before maturity. So, here are some of the cash, in, cash equivalents and how they will be uh, measured. Okay, So, we have cash. It will be measured at face value, meaning kung ano yung makikita mo sa denomination, like in the, in the paper that's uh, 1,000 bill, you're going to record it as a 1,000 bill. If it's uh, 50 pesos, so 50 pesos rin. If it is in a foreign currency, you need to convert that into Philippine peso uh, using the current rate. So, magkano siya? Um, at the end of the year, if it's 51, then you multiply it by 51 uh, times the foreign currency. You know. Then, if it is a deposit in a foreign bank, so yung money, doon siya nakadeposit sa banko that is not in the Philippines. So, that will be part of cash if it is unrestricted deposit. So, remember, pag unrestricted siya, pwede mo siyang ma-withdraw anytime. Hindi siya bawal i-withdraw. And it is classified separately among non-current assets as receivable if it is restricted in material in amount. Okay? So, pag unrestricted pwede mo siyang ma-withdraw anytime, then cash. Pero kung bawal and medyo malaki or significant yung amount, then it's receivable but part of non-current assets. If it is a cash in a closed banks, in a closed bank or banks in bankruptcy, it will be record, uh, measured at estimated realizable value if recoverable amount is less than the face value kung mas maliit yung recoverable amount niya yung yung makukuha mo yung most likely na makukuha mo marerecover mo from that closed bank hindi ba nagsira na siya and if the bank will still uh, distribute the money sa mga depositor pero hindi uh, kaparehas nung amount na dineposit nung depositor. So, yung magkano lang, i-compare mo dun sa face value. So, kung mas maliit yung recoverable amount or yung marireceive ng depositor, then yun yun dapat na amount na i-recognize mo. And this will be part of non-current asset. Therefore, hindi siya um, part ng cash and cash equivalents. Remember, yung cash and cash equivalent, doon lang siya ika-classify under current asset. So, kung nandun siya sa non-current asset, therefore, hindi siya cash, hindi rin siya cash equivalent. Then, we have bank overdraft. So, when cash in bank 
has a credit balance which results from the issuance of checks in excess of the deposit. Anong ibig sabihin nun? So, for example, may deposit ako sa banko. I have 500,000 money in the bank. And then, I issued a check. nag ako ng check eh. But, I wrote in the check um, for a uh, 550,000 pesos. Okay? 550,000 pesos. Um, so, mas malaki yung amount na sinulat ko sa check, eh. Okay? And then, maliit yung, uh, mas maliit yung nandun sa banko. So, nag-withdraw na over ng draft by 50,000. So, mas sumobra yung initial cost na check. Eh. Some banks would accommodate that, would allow you, depending on their criteria. Pero yung ibang banko, they would not allow that. So, tatalbog yung check eh, kasi kulang ng funds. Pero if the bank will allow that, um, kung maganda yung uh, rating mo dun sa bank, so they would allow that. Um, but the the cash, yung difference sa 50,000, uh, utang mo yun sa banko because the bank will issue the money of 550,000 when your balance is only 500,000. So, yung 50,000 na uh, in additional nila on top of your 500,000, utang mo yun sa kanila. That's why uh, that will be treated as a current liability on your books. So, in, in your books. Kasi, kailangan mong bayaran si banko. That is, uh, if the bank overdrafts or overdraft is in a different bank. What do you mean by different bank, ma'am? Meron akong um, uh, deposit sa bank A, may deposit ako sa bank B, and yung my overdraft is sa bank B. So, yung overdraft of bank B uh, will remain as is. For example, yung kanina, yung 50,000. 50,000 siya. Current liability. So, yung nandun sa bank A, it will be classified as cash. Yung sa bank B, current liability. Ano ibig sabihin naman ng same bank? So, if pareho lang yung banko or I have several, uh, several accounts in the same bank, for example, sa bank B, sa bank B, meron akong dalawang account doon. Pwede bang dalawa yung account mo doon, ma'am? Pwede. Okay? So, may dalawa kang account doon. Yung isa, positive yung balance. At yung isa, negative balance. Yun yung may overdraft, yung negative ang balance. Kasi nga, sumobra yung withdrawals. So, kung nasa same na banko lang yung several accounts, and then may overdraft dun sa isa or more, pwede siyang i-offset. Pwede mo siyang ma-charge against dun sa may mga positive balance. So, pwede siyang ma-deduct against or ma-netted against those accounts with positive balance as long as nasa iisang banko lang. Okay? Pero pag magkaiba yung banko, yung different banks, hindi mo pwedeng i-offset, hindi mo pwede siyang i-minus. We also have a compensating balance. It's still a money, okay, or a cash, but uh, this one is a minimum checking or demand deposit account balance that must be maintained in connection with a borrowing agreement. So, pag nangutang sa banko, the bank would sometimes require you that you maintain a certain amount of money as security dun din sa banko nila. Like, mag, mag papautang sila sa'yo, pero dapat may money ka na iiwan, ide-deposit mo dun, i-maintain mo dun sa account. If, if the money that is maintained in that bank account is not legally restricted, hindi siya bawal, na withdraw part siya sa cash. Kasi nga, di ba, kanina, sabi, dapat unrestricted. Pero pag bawal i-withdraw, legally restricted, uh, if the loan is short term, di ba, yung minimum balance or the maintaining balance is related to a loan or a borrowing. So, kung yung utang is short term, the compensating balance will be classified or presented as cash held as compensating balance under current assets. 
pero kung related na utang is long term, it is a non-current investment. Next, we have undelivered or unreleased check. Ano ba yung undelivered? Undelivered, unreleased, hindi natin napadala sa payee. Sino naman yung payee? Si payee yung uh, babayaran natin sana. Pero, hindi natin napadala yung check. So, technically, hindi nila na-receive yung check. So, hindi tayo nakabayad. Okay? So, anong gagawin natin? We're going to revert it back to cash. So, ibabalik natin sa cash. Kasi hindi naging successful yung payment. Then, we have stale checks. So, these are checks that are outstanding for more than 6 months from the date of uh, check. So, stale, uh, in other words, na panis na yung check. Bakit treated as na panis? Kasi hindi natin na pa in cash. So, how do we treat that stale check? So, kung uh, tayo yung nagbayad, tayo yung nagbayad ng check, eh, and then yung pay natin or yung recipient sana ng check, eh, hindi niya napa-encash sa banko. So, technically, again, walang nangyaring pagbabayad. So, since hindi ni successful yung payment, ibalik natin siya sa cash. If, on the other hand, tayo yung binayaran ng check, eh, we're the ones who receive the check, and tayo yung nakalimot na magpa in cash, and lumagpas na siya ng 6 months. So, hindi successful yung pagbayad, kasi hindi siya na-convert into money. Diba, hindi natin siya na-deposit. Dapat, dapat kasi, i-deposit natin siya sa banko, so that it will be part of cash in bank. Pero, hindi natin na pa deposit hindi rin natin na pa in cash so walang pagbabayad na uh, naging successful so ganun din uh, i-remove natin siya from cash bakit i-remove from cash ma'am because when we receive the check we are going to record it immediately but since yung pag-process niya hindi natin nagawa so i-credit natin yung cash. Pero this one, yung nasa number 8 at nasa, nasa number uh, 7. Okay? So, nung sa number 7, kaya siya revert back to cash because our payment, tayo yung nagbabay nagbayad, was unsuccessful. Ito rin, sa 8, our payment also was unsuccessful or hindi siya na complete kasi hindi na pa in cash nung payin natin. For post-dated check, so from the term itself, post-dated, so later na yung date, these are dated after the reporting period. So if it's a post-dated check, and then um, tayo yung nakareceive ng post-dated check from our customer, so yung payment nila, as of the reporting date or as of December 31, hindi pa siya completed until that date kung ano yung sinulat dun sa check will arrive. For example, December 31 yung reporting date, pero yung nasa check na na-receive natin is January 15. May bayaran na bang nang, nangyari or na-complete na ba yung pagbabayad? It's not yet completed. Entitled lang tayo dun sa money na nandun sa check only on January 15, which is next year pa. So, so, hindi pa unrestricted yung money. It's still restricted kasi hindi pa dumadating yung date na January 15. So, kailan lang natin siya pwedeng mapain cash or ma-deposit and matatransfer yung money sa atin uh, sa January 15 pa or later. Pero as of December 31, hindi pa tayo entitled dun sa money. So, if it is a check na tayo yung nag-issue, tayo yung nagbayad, and yung date na nilagay natin is later pa, yung pay natin or yung recipient ng check, eh, hindi pa siya entitled sa bayad natin. So, as of December 31 or the reporting date, 
ibabalik natin yung amount to cash. Kasi nga, noong December 31, hindi naging successful yung pagbabayad. Kasi, as of December 31, hindi pa niya pwedeng ipadeposit yung cheque or hindi pa niya pwedeng i-withdraw yung cheque, withdraw yung amount sa cheque kasi hihintayin pa yung date. If tayo yung naka-receive ng customer's check, hindi pa siya, uh, hindi pa siya cash as of the reporting date kasi later on pa siya, again, um, marirecognize natin as part of our cash. So, i-revert na naman siya uli into accounts receivable. Hindi pa nakapagbayad yung customer natin. Kasi, hindi pa siya napain ka, hindi pa siya pwedeng ipain cash at hindi pa tayo entitled sa money dahil yung date is post-date. Number 10, we have IOUs. IOU, ako may utang sa'yo. So, pag ikaw yung nagsulat sa paper na IOU, it means uh, ikaw yung may utang. Or kung ako, ako yung nagsulat dun sa paper na IOU, ako yung may utang, IOU. U is yung binigyan ko ng papel. So, that's a receivable. Equity securities, they cannot be classified as cash equivalents because shares do not have any maturity date. Except if it is a redeemable preference share. Then, redeemable preference shares have specified redemption date and if these are acquired three months before maturity date, it will be part of the cash equivalents. If it is a callable preference share, it will be part of receivables, expenses, advances, uh, meaning uh, binayal mo in advance yung expense like yung nagbayad ka in advance ng rent that's a prepaid expense or kung ikaw yung binayaran um oh uh, nagbayad ka pa nagbayad ka in advance then that's a prepaid expense kasi uh, later on may expire yung bayad mo ano ba yung receivable so if it's a deposit um deposit which means later on kukunin mo rin siya like like pag nagbayad ka ng um boarding house di ba may one month advance one month deposit yung one month advance yun yung prepaid portion binayaran mo na yung isang buwan in advance yung deposit kaya siya tinawag na deposit because later on kukunin mo yun like the deposit sa banko, iniwan mo dun sa bank, and later on, kukunin mo siya ulit. Uh, pag nag-deposit ka dun sa establishment, so therefore, later on, kukunin mo rin yung deposit. Gaya nung pag bumili ka sa tindahan, tapos wala kang dalang uh, bottle, own bottle mo, uh, hihingi ng deposit yung uh, tindera. And then, pag uh, nabili mo na, uh, ang condition is dapat isauli mo yung bottle, empty bottle ng binili mo para isa sa uli niya yung deposit. So, ganun yun siya. Kaya siya receivable on your part kasi later on, you're going to receive yung deposit. Then, we have temporary investments in shares of stocks. That's FVTPL or FVTOCI. Ano, ano tong dalawa? Fair value through profit and loss and fair value through OCI. These are investments. You will learn about this later on. So, mahaba-habang usapan niyan siya. So, mga investment siya. Then, an use credit line. Okay? So, uh, yung hindi mo pa nagagamit para utangin that is disclosed in the notes. So, in the notes to financial statements. So, meaning, i-describe mo lang siya. Hindi siya makikita dun sa face of your SFP. Treasury warrants, which is a warrant for the payment of money into or from public treasury. This is part of cash. Escrow deposit. These are restricted amount held in trust for another party. Or, uh, for example, this is required by the court of law for a pending case That's part, that is part of the current or non-current assets. Depende kung kailan siya um, pwedeng makonsume. 
then you have unrecorded cash disbursement yung hindi pa na -re record na mga cash disbursement yung binayaran so this will increase recording of the disbursement later on kasi kung hindi pa siya na record kailangan mo siyang i-record later on so pag ni-record mo na siya it will increase your disbursement unrecorded cash collection so to be your treatment you have to record the unrecorded receipts certificates of deposits if these are invested three months before maturity that's cash equivalents if more than three months then that's an investment either short term or long term katulad nung ganin kanina more than three months but less than a year that's short term or current pero pag lumagpas ng one year then that is long term and we have postage stamps on hand so yung postage stamps dun sa sulat okay that's a prepaid asset that's part of the office supplies if you like this video don't forget to click like subscribe and hit the notification bell to be updated with the latest video lessons thank you for watching